across the sea of life There's so much pain Oh, we be bad It's a shame We don't see how it can be Oh, we need to smile at each other Wish for your brother Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you Welcome to yet another show of The Y Factor. Today is April the 7th. And it is the CBB episode. It can't be bothered episode, <laughs> yes. It's that time of the year where, you know, you really are not bothered to do anything at all. You've got a million assignments. You've got your mid-semester exams. And it's that time where three-letter words become really, really famous, yep. like meh, CBB. CBB. Gah. <laughs> ah. Anything really that well, expresses we're, frustration. We're producing this show as a tool for procrastination. So I think, you know, we're helping you procrastinate if you're listening to us too. Yeah, and it makes us feel way better that... While we're procrastinating and producing this show, you're procrastinating and listening to us instead of doing your work. So since we're all doing nothing, let's get started on the news. The Y Factor. Our first news story today is from France. Now, France has the highest Muslim population in all of uh, Western Europe, uh, totaling 5 million people. And they've been in the news for the last couple of years because every now and then they introduce new laws which they reckon are all about preserving secularism, but it's usually targeted at stopping women from wearing hijabs. Well, most recently, the law they've passed, which will come into force on April the 11th, is a law banning niqab which basically hides a face from being worn anywhere publicly so even down the road um you know outside the house anywhere if they do wear this the law is going to come into effect on april the 11th and you'll ban them from this i don't know who this law would affect other than women who wear the niqab because like it doesn't actually say niqabs are banned it says any garment that hides the face is banned but it's not like you walk out the door with a balaclava on your face on yeah. a daily basis well the motivation for this has come from people who say basically women that do when the niqab are not doing so because of their own free choice they're being forced by this uh, into this by male relatives or even if it is their own choice they're succumbing to like greater patriarchy or whatever now fair enough if that's what they want to believe but i think the problem with this is in a secular democracy you don't have the right to dictate what people wear even if they choose to be oppressed like people have the right to take clothes off people have the right to put clothes on and i think the most interesting in france is um there was a lady a niqabi lady on youtube that had a picture uh, sorry a video of her having the niqab and she goes look if you ban me um and this was advice for other niqabi women in france she goes basically wear a medical mask under it like and that covers everything from her eyes down um and she goes fair enough ask me to take it off and she actually took, takes off her niqab on the YouTube clip and she's got this medical mask under it and then she goes no one can ask you to take a medical mask Just off tell because them you have SARS or something <laughs> <laughs> well that's a nice twist to the story but honestly this is ridiculous like taking away someone's right whether you know we don't whether it's islamically you know required or not is not the issue this I don't is see basically how it's issue empowerment of like you're taking away someone's right that doesn't empower them that oppresses them which is apparently what you're trying to protect not just them. that the problem the sad thing is most of these ladies have said basically if this law comes into being we're not going to leave our houses um, or we're just going to leave the country altogether and that's really sad because basically you're trying to save these people quote unquote and you're making them more ostracized you're making them alienated and basically making them stay at home I don't know. I think that France is probably would be happy if all those women left France. I get the feeling that they want a very well, secular country. The problem is these sentiments are spreading across Europe to Belgium, to other countries. Um, so, yeah, we hope something can get, be done about this. The Y Factor. Another big story making the rounds this week is one of sexual predation in the Australian Defence Force, uh, based in Afghanistan, basically. Um, one of the, the cadets filmed himself sleeping with a female cadet and basically streamed it live to the room next door where all his 
male friends were hanging out. And the actual female cadet was 18 years old. And she was very, very traumatised. So, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about where does this leave women? You know, if, you, if, if you're a female who wants to join the Australian Defence Force, obviously you would be discouraged by all these tales. And, I mean, there's heaps and heaps of stuff been coming out about these soldiers in, um, in the ADF, not just to do with, you know, the way they treat women, but in general, like, lots of disgusting behaviour. I think it brings out their inner barbarian when they go to war, personally. I mean, it's not a laughing matter, but something seriously has to be done about this. You, whether you agree that women should be in the Defence Force or not, I think we all do agree that women should be protected from being the, the subjects of sexual harassment in that manner. The Y Factor. Speaking of mothers and women, uh, a new study has shown that women who actually do go back to work after having kids are actually stigmatised and a new survey conducted by careforkids.com.au has shown that up to 60% of working women were made to feel that basically they weren't taking their parenting seriously enough when they go back to work after having children. On the flip side of the coin, 40% of those who are actually stay-at-home mums have expressed the same feeling of stigmatisation. That's right, and negativity towards their decision to stay at home. Now this is really interesting because we were speaking about feminism a couple of episodes ago and things like that. It honestly seems like women in society are just not given the right and the privilege of choosing what they want to do with their own lives. It's like a lose-lose situation. If That's I go right. back to work, I'm going to get attacked for it. If I stay at home with my kids, I get attacked for it. The why factor. Our next story is in Bangladesh, where apparently they're proposing to get rid of Islamic law where it regards inheritance. So basically, your will will not be according to Sharia anymore. Both men and women would inherit the exact same amount, which is an aim that was long sought by women's groups. I think that the law as it currently stands is half of the inheritance that men receive for the women. And basically, the government has come out and said that they need to um, reform these laws. Now, this has actually attracted a whole lot of opposition from thousands of angry Bangladeshi youth who have taken the streets to protest this. And basically they're saying you're playing with an Islamic injunction. The mufti of the country came out and said basically this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, the government and those who are proposing the changes, they're basically saying um, it's we're just keeping up to date with society. That's interesting. Let us know what you guys think about that. The Y Factor. It seems like women and the contentious issues surrounding them never stop. I'm not doing this on purpose, but the next news story I just picked up is also about women and their rights. So um, More like the abuse of their rights? Looks like females are dominating our news bulletin today. This one is set in the US and it surrounds an Emirates born male who's 46 years old uh he went to the u.s and he brought a woman with him as a household servant for he his wife and his five kids he told her that he'd be paying her ten dollars an hour for 40 hours of work a week that's ten dollars u.s okay instead of paying her what he ended up doing was forcing her to work seven days a week until midnight without pay and then he wouldn't let her talk to anyone outside of the family and she was never allowed to leave the house on her own She has now escaped and is currently hiding. And then when he was confronted by investigators, he produced a document indicating that he'd paid her 19,000 US dollars. But there's been no evidence to that effect. And I mean, basically, basically, it's like he kept her as a slave in his house. He kidnapped her from whatever country he took her from and never let her go. I think it's really interesting because this issue of having domestic servants and maids in these Gulf countries, countries yeah. is really ridiculous honestly it's conditions of slavery um, I know they get paid it's very um, common though like it is but that's the sickening thing servants. that's the sickening thing yeah, like it's so common that people don't even question it anymore mm-hmm. and households have up to you know three four uh, maid servants for different you know chores and stuff now I've spoken to a couple of people about this that are from the Gulf region and they're like look you know what they should be thankful we're giving them jobs mm. but honestly like at the, with the conditions they're receiving, it's a modern day form of slavery. Yeah, because as far as I understand, once they get to your house, uh, the um, the house owner pretty much takes your passport, and then you have no choice. That's right. Like, you can't leave the country. Basically. Well, if anyone out there has more knowledge on this, or basically has any experiences in regards to this, um, let us know on Facebook your thoughts. The Y Factor. Speaking of USA, police have actually used pepper spray twice on a Colorado second grader who listen to this 
threatened them with a sharpened piece of wood um, after teachers called the police because he was chucking a tantrum. <laughs> now, the police actually, um, there's, the report shows that there was shocking details um, of the eight-year-old's tantrum and the only thing that the police could do to contain him was use pepper spray on him and they used the act twice. Well, so his teachers couldn't control him and they decided to call the police. And the police did use pepper spray on a kid in year two. How old is someone when they're in year two? Like He was also handcuffed and later taken oh. to school um, for children with behavioural issues. <laughs> now, I know children sometimes do get really, really pesty, but honestly, pepper spray on an eight-year-old is disgusting. Eight-year-old. Eight years old. Wow. Okay. The Y Factor.